The dish has yum in the title. How do you think this is gonna go? Okay, so we're making Tom Yum. Now, why does that matter? If you're asking that question, then you've never had Tom Yum. It is hands down one of the greatest soups that has ever been created by a human being. Period, end of story. I'm not getting that deep into it. It is the perfect mix of flavors I can possibly think of. As soon as it lands on your tongue, it hits every single segment of your brain 100%. You know, they say like, oh, you only use a certain percentage of your brain, which I'm pretty sure that was proven incorrect, but this goddamn Tom Yum will make you use 100% of your goddamn noggin, I'll tell you that. I'll Oftentimes when people make Tom Yum, they use a lot of things like pre-made non prick and they don't really make their own seafood stock. We're doing absolutely everything from scratch and that includes our own non prick pal. Now, let's make this, shall we? It's Tommy Yummy Mommy time. All right, we have two elements to make our Tom Yum. First, you cannot do anything until you've made your own non prick pal. Sorry, you're not going to the store this time, buddy. First off, you'll get an irreplaceable feeling of accomplishment of making it yourself, which is a nice boost of serotonin. I'm gonna assume you might want that, I don't know. And you'll have tons of this delicious stuff to put on your rice and or all over your body because it is that good. And the second element to your Tom Yum is the, well, actual Tom Yum, which much of its base flavor will be created with that non prick. Now, let's go to NPP Town. That's short. First, let's prepare our tamarind. Get yourself a third cup or 90 grams of tamarind paste. This stuff is thicker than my thighs, so to get that worked, pop it into a bowl and pour over half a cup or 120 milliliters of boiling hot water. Stir it and let it sit for a few minutes. Stir again till smooth, then pass it through a mesh strainer until the majority of it has passed through and nothing else will. And well, that's it. That just gets any potential seed fragments out and it turns it into a more fluid paste. The rest is very, very easy. Get a nice wok and add one and a quarter cup or 295 milliliters of vegetable oil. And actually, wait, let me preface the next bit. We're doing the following recipe pretty much 100% in grams. Oh, why, Josh? Why did you do this to us? Well, because a proper non prick pow needs to be highly consistent. And due to the fact that each vegetable is incredibly different in size, well, we do it in grams. So please take any complaints to the comments and potentially receive a kiss from Papa. Before heating that oil, add 50 grams of garlic, peeled and thinly sliced, then turn the heat to medium and let that bad boy naturally come up. First, the garlic will start to bubble, then fry and let that bad boy cook, stirring occasionally until the garlic is toasted and golden brown. Brown. Remove from the oil with a skimmer and place on a paper towel to drain. Next, add 100 grams of peeled and thinly sliced shallots. Leave the oil on medium and let those bad boys fry, stirring constantly. Then once most of the bubbling has subsided and they're a nice golden brown, quickly remove them from the oil. And yes, they will continue to brown when removing them. So, you know, try to be a little preemptive here and drain on a paper towel. Last, you'll add 50 grams of de-seeded dried puya or arbol chilies. Gently stir those and fry for about 20 to 30 seconds or till fragrant and beginning to darken. Remove and drain yet again on a paper towel. This just helps get the chilies toasted more specifically, crunchy. All those bad boys are cooling. Add 25 grams of dried shrimp to a food processor and process on high until you get as fine of a powder as possible. Dump that out. Then in the same food processor, add your fried chilies, fried garlic, and shallots. Now don't try to get smart when making this recipe and try to do the dried shrimp with the chilies and garlic because the shrimp won't get fine enough like that. Papa makes his recipes a certain way for a certain reason. I'm tired of the DMs. Oh, but Papa, I made your recipe and this got messed up and all I did was change this step. Anyway, blend that on high until you get a fine but slightly crumbly mixture. And well, that's it. One sniff of this will certainly cause a good old fashioned buzz. All right, back to your wok with the oil from earlier. Pop that bad boy on medium heat until, uh, Hot, then add your shrimp powder, lightly stir fry till fragrant, then add 150 grams of palm sugar that's been crushed nicely, cook together, stirring constantly until your palm sugar is completely dissolved, then stir in your chili mixture, your tamarind paste, 90 grams of fish sauce, then just let that simmer, stirring often until slightly thickened, and that's your nom prick. Pour that into a bowl and let it cool completely. Yes, this will thicken significantly when cooled. It's more of a jam, if anything. Now it's Tom Yum time. First, get yourself one and a half pounds of head-on shrimp or ideally tiger prawns if you can get your hands on them. Remove their heads and shells, place it in a separate bowl. Of course, devein your shrimp as well. Now first in a medium stock pot, add all of your shrimp heads and shells. The heads are a massive driver of flavor. So I would strongly advise against making this without the heads. You know, you, do you want to kiss or not? Cover that with three and a half cups or 830 milliliters of water. Heat over medium high and as soon as it starts to come to a boil, lower the heat to medium low and simmer till reduced to about three cups, skimming any foam that rises to the top. About 10 minutes. Straight on 
out the heads and shells and you have your shrimp stock. Now get a large piece of cheesecloth and add two stalks of lemongrass sliced and a two inch knob of galangal peeled and sliced as well. Wrap that up tightly to make a sachet and tie together with kitchen twine to fully enclose so it doesn't open in the good soup. In a small stock pot, add just enough vegetable oil to coat the bottom of the pot. Heat over medium high until hot, hot, hot. Then add two heads of mini beach mushrooms with their base cut off and two king oyster mushrooms sliced. Sear that for three minutes, stirring occasionally until it gets a nice browning and the mushrooms are softened. Remove those, then add a quarter cup or 80 grams of your non prick pal from earlier and five cloves of garlic thinly sliced and five Thai chilies thinly sliced. Saute that until fragrant, about 30 seconds, adding your sachet, then all of your shrimp stock followed by seven kefir lime leaves, then just bring that to a light simmer over medium heat and cook for 15 minutes. Add your mushrooms back to the pot, then add your peeled and deveined shrimp from earlier, reduce the heat to low and gently cook those for two to three more minutes or just until your shrimp is cooked through. Remove your sachet and squeeze any yummy Then hit that with a quarter cup or 55 grams of fish sauce, three tablespoons or 38 grams of lime juice, and three tablespoons or 42 grams of palm sugar. Give it a taste and adjust the seasoning as needed. You know, oftentimes when I make this, I find myself going back and forth between all three of those seasonings. You gotta get that balanced harmony of rich umami saltiness, a fair level of sweetness, and a nice zingy tartness. It's kind of hard to describe unless you've had it the right way. Play with it until it tastes incredible to you. Optionally, you can toss in half a bunch of cilantro and Thai basil to steep in the hot broth just before serving, and then, well, guess what? Get yourself a bowl, serve it up. I like to add a little bit of the oil from the Nam Prik Pao to each bowl, but you could also use regular chili oil. Garnish with fresh cilantro leaves. Now that looks like a god dang near perfect bowl of tom yum that was given about all the love it deserves. And we could stop there, but as soon as I tasted this, it was so god dang good. It felt like a borderline fancy experience, so obviously I made a fancy version. This is more of a technique rather than just a recipe, so let's play it out. First, here's the elements to the dish. Seared king oyster mushrooms, browned butter lobster, scallion emulsification, and sort of a coconut enriched tom yum. Now first, our mushrooms were sliced about a half inch thick, scored in a crosshatch, and seared in a pan. I used a weight to keep them pressed down for even searing, flipped to enjoy a visceral deep browning on each beautiful mushroom. Seasoned with salt only to highlight that classic mushroom flavor. For the scallion puree, I lightly simmered two bunches of scallions or green onions in water until incredibly soft, added to a blender with a few cloves of garlic and a splash of rice vinegar, blended it on high until super smooth, then emulsified with a couple tablespoons of toasted sesame oil and the rest with vegetable oil until it reached the desired consistency and thick. Miss. Passed through a fine mesh strainer, seasoned to taste with salt, and added to a squirty squirt bottle. As for the lobster, I kept it simple. Take a lobster from its shell while it's still raw, gently to keep it, you know, intact. Be sure to remove its vein, if not already. And then I just laid that in the same cooking water that we used for the scallions to impart some of that green onion flavor to the lobster and very, very gently kept it in that hot water bath till cooked through about three to four minutes. Then I removed it, brushed it with hot brown butter, and for the coconut tom yum, I mixed equal parts of our fully seasoned tom yum with coconut cream, then passed it through a mesh strainer, seasoned with salt if needed, and finally plated. Place your lobster tail in the center of the plate. Oh boy, I can already feel the whizzy coming. Slice the sear mushroom thick boy in half lengthwise, laid it alternating right next to the lobster. You know, it's nice and snug. Get to know each other. Alternating randomized dots of scallion emulsification onto your plate. And, uh, bonjour table service, s'il vous plaît. A nice table side pour of your Tom Yum coconut cream. I mean, are we got, we have French music going. Let's get the French music playing. Good Lord. <laughs> A little line of furikake on the mushrooms. Some nice dots of chili oil on the Tom Yum cream. And finally, some fresh cilantro and baby Thai basil leaves. Not gonna lie. Although this is a bit of a way a ways from a Tom Yum, it has the essence of its soul in there. And it looks ridiculous. So let's taste test this and see what we think of both Mr. Traditional and Mr. Fancy. Wow, this took a lot longer than I thought it was gonna take. This whole process, including the non prick, should take you a grand total of maybe one to two hours maximum. But if you go to the store four times, then it will take a very long time. So don't do that. All right, we have two different variations. Oh. <clears throat> Whoa. It's a little spicy. Was it worth it, yes or no? Yes, the answer is always yes. It's perfectly balanced. You got salty, acid, sweetness, all three, the trifecta. You've seen my Tom Cut guide a long time ago. Tom Yum. Very yummy for your little baby tummy. Now, the fine dining version. Wow, why did we do this? I don't know. I wouldn't wanted to see if we could do it and it was actually shockingly easy. Green onion puree, a little bit of coconut milk, and lobster, look at this. You're gonna pay $40 for this. I can tell you right now, that is not what I 
paid for it. The prawn is almost like a bridge between shrimp and lobster. Lobster's over here, shrimp is like down here. But then in between, you have this prawn. Now this is all the way there, we maximized it. Could have put caviar in this, the probably should have. Mm, ice cold, just like I like it. This has been sitting for a while, but I will say the lobster's cooked perfectly. It's got that brown butter, a little bit of a toast to it, right? It's elevated. It's not quite just sweet lobster flesh. I feel like this is more Tom Kagai almost. I know nobody's gonna make this version. I just wanted to prove that you could elevate it, but at the end of the day, you should make this one. If you've never had a Tom Yum or a Tom Kagai, this is the place that you start. Please do not skip any steps. Do not go to the store and buy your own Nam Prick Pal. All right, you're gonna make your own because you're gonna have this much left over. And do you know what you can do with this? This is like a portal of flavor into any avenue you could ever want to go. Don't you want the little Wizard of Oz flavor portal? It's right here. See, I can see them in there. Wow. Oh, ah, is a... I'm not gonna try to convince anyone to do anything today, all right? It's been a long day, we all wanna go home. So, with all that being said, uh... You wanna know what else has good soup? B-roll. <laughs>